Welcome to another screencast. Today we're going to look at creating a scrolling text field uh, within our Midsummer Night's Dream playbook. As you can see I'm already prepared with a page uh, on, on the right here which has uh, the heading A Midsummer Night's Dream by Charles and Mary Lamb. So this is actually the narrative of the story um, written by those two authors and what the intention is is to put this text into this text frame that you see here but scrolling because it's a very very long text. So what we have to do uh, first of all is to work out the the width of this, uh, this this text field. So I've got my info panel here and I'm noticing this is 92 millimeters wide. So what I'm going to need to do is to create another text field um, which I'm going to then put or paste into here, but it's going to be much longer than the space allocated for it. This will make sense in a moment. I'm going to first of all uh, so create a new document. I'm going to do this in a new document. It makes it a lot easier. Um, and I'm going to set this to be 5,400 uh, millimeters long. Now this is the maximum virtually uh, that you can create and this is probably going to be far too long but no issues here because I'm going to have to uh, you know, cut this, uh, cut this off. I don't need facing pages uh, but I do need a text frame automatically. So I'm creating this new, uh, as you can see, ultra ultra long page uh, with a text frame in it. Now um, my text uh, is available to me uh, in another application, so I'm just going to copy this text and I'm going to paste it straight in to this text field. Um, now what I need to do now is I need to just zoom in here because what I want to do uh, with my info panel open, let's just bring that up onto the screen, uh, I want to actually make this text frame less than uh, our text frame in the, in, in, in the target document. Um, if you remember we had 92 millimeters so you may see the width going down I'm going to take this down to 84 or so Let's see, 84 or so pixels, uh, I beg your pardon, millimetres wide, um, so that that will fit easily into our, old, our, our target text frame. Now what I'm going to do also is I'm going to bring this text frame now up uh, until it meets the text. Now I, I have to emphasise that your maximum length of page uh, in, in design is 5,400 millimetres. Um, so you aren't going to be able to make anything uh, longer than this frame or this text uh, that you see here. So, so essentially, um, you know, th this is fine. This is fine. This is very long, but it is, it is going to work. Now, the other thing I want to do before I um, do anything else with this is I want to make sure that I have in my paragraph styles the same uh, I need the the body text essentially, so I'm going to um, I'm going to uh, load the paragraph styles. I'm opening this up. I'm going to uncheck all for a start, and all I really want looking for here we are. I want body text, and I want body text first. Those are the only two styles I actually need. Um, so now what I'm going to do is to select all of this text and then with my body text I'm going to make that into the body text. We now just need to zoom in to this top paragraph and I'm now going to make this into body text first. Let's just make sure that we're not using any any extraordinary character styles. No, that should be fine. Now we also need to make sure by zooming out that we still have that in the, uh, the, the, the text frame. So I just need to make sure by pulling this down here that we've actually got gone to the very end of the text. Let's just bring that up. Okay, so now I'm going to select the text frame 
copy this text frame, move back into my target document, select uh, the, the, uh, the text frame that's the target, and paste into. Now you'll see that what's happened is we have this text inside, but it's actually placed it right in the center. So I don't know if you can see this, but I've actually got a text frame uh, overflowing effectively. And if I move right up, you'll be able to see in a moment that I can, I can get to the very top of it. But the way that I'm going to do this is to, is to actually zoom out. Because it's going a long way, it's going right up to the top here. And I'm going to grab this and bring it right the way down, well, to about there so that I can see what I'm doing now. That gives you a better idea. Bring this right down to the top of that text frame. Let's now just have a, a look in here. And I also now need to move it to the left so that it sits at the left of that giving me room on the right for my scrolling uh, frame, my scrolling bar, as you'll, as you'll see in a moment. Okay, so this text is now inside, uh, and as you can see with these two lines, I'm pointing that out to you here, here and here, that's, that's actually the, uh, the text frame that's, that's overflowing inside this one that I've now highlighted. Now, having highlighted this text frame, in other words, the parent, of this, I now need to create an object style, and in fact, I've already done this, so I'm just going to select it. I've got a, a something called scrolling text frame, and I'm going to show you uh, what I've got in there. Nothing particularly significant about anything uh, in the attributes for this particular scro scrolling or this, this text frame, except that under export tagging, I'm using a, uh, a tag called a div, in other words, a division and I'm giving it a class name of scroller. Now, the, let's just say OK to that. Now, the reason for this is that I will use um, my own CSS, my own cascading style sheet uh, definition for this particular uh, uh, frame, um, and that is something that I'm going to now show you by dragging this onto the screen. So you can see that um, my div scroller has certain attributes. First of all, it's a relative position. I'm actually putting a border uh, around it. I think that's quite important because it, show, it defines the area. It's a one, only a one pixel solid silver border. But then I've got something very special here going on. I've got, um, what I'm saying is that the, the division or the block inside the scroller, in other words, this little item here is targeting the div inside the div, the, the div called scroller. The overflow for that is automatic, but it has a, um, a, a scroll um, that is basically, uh, th these are sort of a, a, a effectively to support all kinds of rules here in, a, in all court kinds of systems, but essentially the Y direction, that is up and down, is set to scroll, whereas the direction uh, to the left and the right, that is the X direction, is hidden. Although hopefully we won't have any um, content going left and right anyway. Finally, this little rule at the bottom here is for specifically for the iPad to make sure that when we touch this with our finger, we will actually get a scrolling uh, bar. So what that means is that and now I'm going to export this I'm only exporting this particular file, and we will get some errors, I know that. Uh, but I'm going to ex export this as a fixed layout. Um, the important thing is that under the CSS, then, I'm adding that, uh, that uh, style sheet that I've just shown you, which is then providing the rules for the scroller. As I say, we will get a, a few errors here because we're not exporting it with the correct table of contents and so on. So there are a few uh, errors there, but nothing to do with what we have created. So this is bringing, uh, this is opening now in my um, iBooks. I'm just bringing that onto the screen. We're going to move through to that particular page, which is here. And as you can see, there is the text, 
and now I'm with my finger I'm actually scrolling up and down I can actually pick this up and move down to the bottom of the text you can see that we've actually got a little bit of space uh, at the bottom and I might need to uh, correct that by by removing that empty space but otherwise uh, all is working correctly